Hello friends, younger but quite a bit uglier, Professor X here, bringing you another Dota 2 video in which we're going to be taking a look at Ford Gaming Snake King's Omni Knight. This hero is completely trending right now, lots of people are saying that it's extremely broken in the offlane and position 5 role, so let's take a look at what all the hype is about. So in terms of skill build, Snake King goes for max purification first, single value point in degen aura. I know a lot of Omni Knights will go for a second point in this if you feel like you can apply pressure with it in the laning stage. However, in a lot of games, an early point in Heavenly Grace is amazing simply because 8 HP regen over a 12 second duration for 80 mana is amazing for laning. And then on top of that, it's a strong dispel. So a value point in this is fantastic. After that, Snake King maxes out the Heavenly Grace up until the point where he thinks that he's going to be fighting. And once team fights start, then it's great to have a point in the Guardian Angel for that fight. After that, max out the Heavenly Grace. Level 10, of course you go for that GPM talent. It is so much GPM, it lets you run around and fight with your team while still farming all of these items that are broken on Omni Knight. Then after that, of course, you max out the Heavenly Grace. Then your Degen Aura. He even doesn't go for the second point in Ultimate. He goes for a point in Degen instead uh, and goes for the Ultimate at level 13. Presumably just because maybe it was on cooldown. Maybe it was because uh, Guardian Angel just isn't that great to, to level up. It gives you uh, one extra second duration, reduces the cooldown by only 10 seconds, and is 50 extra mana. But I, I assume in this game it was probably because it was on cooldown, so what's the point of leveling it up if you're not going to use it until the next level anyway? Then max out Degen Aura, level 15. You typically will go for the 90 damage talent in games where you feel like you can run in and actually hit people without just losing the game for your team. Uh, sometimes there's like a doom on the enemy team or something like that, and you feel like if you go into the fight, you're just going to feed, and it's really important for you to just stay on the outskirts of a fight. And if you're playing that sort of playstyle, damage doesn't do anything, and 35% XP gain is amazing on any core hero. Then, of course, Guardian Angel, level 18, level 20, 12% 12 degen aura, just because with the items that you typically build on Omni Knight right now, you don't need mana regen. You have a Soul Ring, you have a Solar Crest, which gives you mana regen, even a Lincoln Sphere in this game. Like, all of these items give you so much mana. And then at level 25, both of these talents are very good. Uh, purification, damage, and heal is generally what you just want to default to. However, if there are heroes on your team that really like to get Heavenly Graced, like a Sven, like an OD, or multiple heroes that like to get Heavenly Graced, then having two of those up, which this cooldown reduction allows you to do, at the same time is, is amazing. So in terms of starting items, Snake King goes for three Mangoes, two Tangos, Stout Shield. The three Mangoes are because, of course, this hero has HP regen in his spells, so all you need is mana to cast them, and you're going to have tons of HP regen for the lane. Then go for Soul Ring as a first item after Quelling Blade. Boots, Phase Boots, Stick, because this hero has a low mana pool but likes to use his mana. Uh, Midas in this game, I think in particular in this game, uh, Snake King went for the Midas simply because the game looked like it was going to go late. If we look at these heroes, there's an Enigma, there's a Wraith King, probably is going to go for a Midas. Sniper might even go for a Midas. So this game is going to go late, so you may as well have the Midas. If you don't go for the Midas, if you want to fight early, Drums is amazing on this hero. Then he builds into a Hood because there's a lot of magic damage on the enemy team. Pipe. Uh, Medallion of Courage, Solar Crest. This is one of the most common items on this hero. I see a lot of people going drums into Solar Crest. Just because if you Heavenly Grace somebody and Solar Crest them, they have all that armor, status resist, extra attack speed, and then you could heal them and you could pop your ulti. It, it makes somebody feel like a god, and uh, that's pretty good in Dota. So this is a, an amazing core item on Omni Knight. After that, you basically just go for typical aura items like you know Crimson Guard, Vlads, whatever your team needs. He's a pretty typical offlaner, he just makes somebody a god. So I want to look at an interesting little play that Snake King does a couple of times in the laning phase against Raid King. So generally speaking, Omni Knight, just because he has ridiculous armor, he has ridiculous base damage, he's a melee hero so he benefits from a Quelling Blade, his Purification, which is one of the best health swings in Dota, uh, and then Degen Aura, which is going to apply attack slow and move slow. You can just show up to a lane, and you're probably going to win the lane on Omni. Like, this hero just outlanes people. But you want to apply as much pressure as you can. This hero's not just built to do well in the lane. This hero is built to stomp lanes. So how does Snake King do it? He does it by doing little plays like this. So we can see here that Miracle is about to last hit this melee creep here. It's got probably one hit with the Quelling Blade left on it. Uh, Snake King wants this range creep, but he also wants to spam out the purification in a way that's going to get him CS 
and also harass. You don't want to use this ability. If you use this ability two times and the enemy team doesn't get hit by it, then you don't have mana to spam it until they die. And if you don't have mana to spam it until they die, then they don't have that threat of you killing them there, which means maybe the supports don't have to come to the bot lane and they kill your mid. Like, the game can snowball out of control if you miss two purifications. That's all it takes. So what Snake King does is he messes up this last hit for Miracle, he harasses him, and then he gets a range creep CS because this gives way more gold than a melee creep CS. And I can tell you, he has consistently done this many, many times during the laning stage. There are situations where Miracle will not be near the creep wave and he'll walk up and just hit the range creep instead of trying to CS it with the purification. Because what's the point? You want to use this to harass. There will be situations where he can harass Miracle, but he can't get a CS on a range creep because you don't want to have Miracle be able to deny, deny a range creep because you use purification to harass him. You can see here that Miracle even punishes the purification usage by spawning skeletons to harass snaking here. So if you are just misusing this ability and constantly spamming it, it's not going to be good for you. You're not going to apply as much pressure as possible. You want to be efficient with it. So I want to talk for a bit about what Snaking does to end the laning phase on Omni Knight. I think that's really important for heroes. Uh, certain heroes will start fighting, they run at people, they gank, you know, something like an Axe or a Slaughter, they'd look, to, they'd look to start fights and be aggressive. Something like a Sand King, you'd look to just sit in trees somewhere using Sandstorm to defend a lane. So what do you do on Omni? Because really in the mid game, what this hero wants to do is he wants to buff up this guy. And then this guy runs in with basically a double god strength and uh, you know kills everybody but you can't do that yet this guy wants to farm so what do you do at the start of the mid game so the first thing that i do want to point out is that at a certain point he gets a soul ring and once he gets the soul ring he starts spamming his purification on the uh, wraith king over and over and over again he even uses the purification when he doesn't have the soul ring up he just spams it so wraith king has to leave the lane once wraith king leaves the lane then shadow demon comes to the lane to just hold this tower so what does Snake King do? Does he stop pushing? Does he deny every creep? No, he uses purification on the waves and he dives this guy. He acts very aggressively on the Shadow Demon. He doesn't do it here, but he was doing it earlier. He just doesn't want to give Shadow Demon a free lane because he knows what they're doing. You can see that he runs at him with the uh, with the Heavenly Grace. So before this, before this actually happened, he pushed in the lane, cut the creep wave, ran and got the bounty runes. Uh, so he's 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 not being defensive by any means. He's being very aggressive and using this Heavenly Grace anytime he's about to run in. So what happens here? Enemy team is, they don't want to deal with this Omni Knight bot. He's pressuring here. They want to avoid him. So they go to push the mid lane with this catapult. Sniper's here as well. And Omni Knight shows up as a bodyguard. So this is his way of contributing to the game without doing the whole support you are on Sven thing. Because that's not happening yet. So all he needs to do is show up to that tower and make sure the catapult dies. And then he walks straight back bot where he can pressure. So essentially what you do on this hero is up until the point where you want to buff somebody on your team and you actually want to fight with the guy that you're buffing, you show up and you bodyguard tower. Because look at this guy's health. 1260 health. Heavenly Grace adds another 300 at this point. Adds 50% status resist. HP regen. He's got Guardian Angel. He's got Purification. He's not dying. So you want to abuse that. So you want to take pressure off your team by stopping pushes and you want to apply pressure by constantly purificationing in the creep wave. Next, I want to take a look at how Snaking plays Omni Knight in team fights. Uh, but first, I want to tell you that the way that he gets into these fights is that basically uh, he will farm a lane. He will push one creep wave or something like that adjacent to his Sven. So his team will be occupying this top jungle area, for example. He'll go mid push one single wave, he won't even go for the last hits, and he'll just dart top. So he's contributing by pushing creep waves in because somebody has to do it, but he gets to his team because he needs to be there for fights. Uh, likewise, sometimes he will uh, jungle near his team, but after killing the jungle camp, he'll immediately get to his team. So that's kind of how he gets farm is he's chilling near his team. He's with his Sven so that he can buff him up, but he's uh, jungling the camps that the Sven doesn't want, or he's pushing in lanes that the Sven doesn't want. So if we watch this fight, so they've smoked, and they know a fight's about to start, he preemptively casts Heavenly Grace on Sven because honestly, you would prefer to have the enemy team just waste a bunch of shit on him rather than to dispel one single thing. You'd rather have 50% status resist on a bunch of stuff. And then of course Sven gets damage from this. They go on the Wraith King. He tries to keep a decent distance from the Sven. So he's not going in and right clicking. He's letting the Sven do all of the right clicking because what is Omni Knight's damage compared to this beast? It's nothing. You know, you just stand, you stand in the area 
uh, force spells to be used on you and you're cool with that because uh, as long as you're in the area you can heal your heal your man so he just uses all of his defensive abilities constantly cast the heavenly grace on the sven you don't even need to use it to dispel stuff unless there's something very important to dispel like a beastmaster roar because and, and because realistically like 50 percent status resist even on a beastmaster roar that's honestly enough if you're wasting a roar on a 50 percent status resistance ability it's it's pretty rough uh, so he's just constantly casting it on Sven because it's got a two-second downtime. So you just need the Sven to be a little bit careful in that two-second window, and, and most people will will understand that. And he just constantly heals, uh, plays very similar to like a Dazzle or something along those lines. Once he gets the Solar Crest, he's going to do the exact same thing as if the Solar Crest is part of Heavenly Grace, where he just constantly casts it on the Sven, standing in trees, standing close enough to the Sven to get his spells on him, but far enough away that he's not just going to die in the crossfire. Just to give you a bit of closure on the game, basically what happened is Ford had a massive gold lead. They put Heavenly Grace on Sven, he popped ulti, he had an Aegis, and he sieged high ground. And enemy team, they have to commit to the Sven because he's the only one hitting the tower, and it doesn't work. They lose. They call GG. That's uh, basically how every single Omni Knight game goes. I personally think this hero is completely busted right now. The difficult thing with dealing with an Omni is that he's so tanky, so if you try to go on him in a fight if you try to go through the guy that he's buffing and go on him he can survive for long enough to just heavenly grace himself and survive everything so if you don't go on the tanky guy that he's buffing you're just going on him who's also a tanky melee frontlining offlaner who has a bunch of items that are defensive it's it's incredibly difficult to deal with this hero currently and doom is no longer even a counter to omni because you just have status resist all the time so a doom is going to get eaten up and then you have regen as well from the heavenly grace so it doesn't do anything you just heal for all of the doom damage it's quite difficult get some mmr with this hero while you still can guys because uh it's definitely going to get nerfed after the qualifiers